now gave each and every one of us destiny in him. Or be your You mean he gave you destiny in Jesus, who is the head of all principalities and powers. And the Bible says you are complete. Oh, how many people are complete in him here? We don't need to cast that devil. He's on the run already. He's on the run. He's on the road. God said to Isaiah, he said, by the knowledge of my son shall many be justified. They'll be free. As they learn about Jesus, freedom will happen. I don't need to lay hands on you. As you are hearing, you are being free. You are delivered. You are healed. So mightily prevailed the word of God. He said, I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you your own inheritance among them that are sanctified. If I be a man of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever your hand has been trying to get, whatever you have been trying to grab, I speak by the faith of Jesus Christ and by the authority that raised Christ from the dead. I ask that that thing be delivered into your hand now. Oh yeah, somebody grab it, grab your own, grab your own. Oh yeah, receive your own, grab it, grab it. Say, Father, I grab it, I receive it. Please be seated. Thank you, Jesus. God now gave us destiny. Our destiny. Anybody who is not born again does not have destiny. Uh, how can you say so? How can you say so, Apostle? Uh, what of all the people who are not born again? What of Buhari? is not born again. His destiny is to be president of Nigeria. What do you call destiny? To you, destiny is physical act. That's why a lot of Christians are not spiritual. Henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. We don't relate physically anymore. Even though our outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed on a daily basis. We are dangerous people. As a matter of fact, we are invisible. The devil can't locate you unless you call him. He said, neither give place to the devil. That means the devil is placeless. NYSE without a place, a placement. You see, God packaged a destiny for you. Whatever your own destiny, he packaged it and loaded it in Christ. Once you become born again, you are introduced to your destiny. And remember, it is where? In Christ. So for anybody to obtain your destiny, the person has to go through Christ. You see how? <laughs> Remember, I'm not talking to you from my head. It's from the pages of the scripture. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse number 9, Jesus Every time I share revelation like this, I don't know why time they run. One of these is I will command time to stand still. <laughs> if you refuse to obey me, I will go there. Use hands, stop them. <laughs> There's a man of God somewhere. You know, one, one man of God. He went to one town to go and preach. And then the juju priest in that town now came out. He said, I will show you that your God is not a God. My God is a real God. Is that we disgrace this your Jesus Christ today? No, this is your God. I will disgrace it today. So the man of God said, How are you going to disgrace? So he now brought here. The Juju priest brought here. He said, Tell your God to move this chair. Let's see. If your God is real, let this chair be lifted. See, man of God, you don't start prayer. My God, my Father, if you are God, He's even doubting the God that sent him there. <laughs> Prove yourself. Ignorance is a terrible thing, especially spiritual ignorance. You mean you came into town with Jesus? Now, cheer, you won't make Jesus come to carry. What are you doing there? So I said, Man of God, what are you doing? Why do you have to ask Jesus to carry cheer? Tell him, This is God right here. I'm a member of the body of Christ. When I get there, I carry the chair myself. So look at him. Whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. 
whatever I lose on earth, am I making sense to somebody here? Snap me. Even me myself, I like to snap myself. Why are you struggling? Ig ignorant, ignorant, ignorant. He said, henceforth, no we, no man after the flesh, including Christ. We do not know him after the flesh. The beating they gave him physically, who can let him up? If Jesus will appear physically in the realm of the spirit right now, bow, all of you will fall uh, without even physically appearing. Just one tiny, small, bitty anointing over the congregation. <laughs> you are already crying or you are on the floor. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the anointing is heavy. Not to talk of when. There's a lady in Saudi Arabia. I was telling them in the office. I just got born again. She's from the palace. She's the daughter, a daughter of one of the, uh, the sheikhs in Saudi Arabia. And they said, they don't, you know, they don't allow Bible to come in. Not talk of you giving your life to Christ. She was doing Allah. She was praying 4 p.m. prayer in the in her own room. Allah, walk back. And then she heard, I'm the one you need. She was the only one in the room. She looked. Who, who, who said that? Eh? She continued again. La walk back. He said, I'm the one you are looking for. Sophia gripped her. She said, Who is talking to me? Who is talking to me? So she couldn't go out. She sat down in fear. Where she sat, she slept off, slept off. In her dream, as soon as she fell asleep, behold, my king appeared. <laughs> my maker, my husband, my friend, my savior, the soon coming king, the one that was and is and forever shall be. I don't know whether you know who I'm talking about. His name is Jesus. Step out in her dream. He said, I am Isa. You know, in Muslim, they call him Isa. He said, I am Isa. I'm the one you need. He said, the one you are praying to does not exist. He said, I am he. Showed he her uh, the wound, the handprint. He said, Once you wake up, he told her in the day, Once you wake up, go on the internet. There is a book Christians read. It's called Bible. He said, Read from the book of John. You will find me there. <laughs> they got the lost research. She's born again now. For one year, solid. After one year, she now came out. She said she's ready to die. If they want to kill her, they kill her. He said, but all her sisters in the palace, she has converted them. <laughs> Jesus does not come to anybody to talk about Moses to anybody. He doesn't. He doesn't discuss anybody. He discusses himself. In John, he says, search the scriptures. You think you know them. They are they that speak of me. Now me, the Bible they talk about. Jesus is the center theme of the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. Am I talking to somebody here? Stop comparing us with anybody. Here. And we are so privileged. Among everybody who has ever lived. Nobody lived in Christ. We are the only ones. Moses did not live in Christ. I don't know whether somebody heard what I said. David did not live in Christ. A am I making sense to you? Elisha did not live in Christ. Samson did not live in Christ. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. If any man... Concerning that man, all things if which they disturbed the man before, all things if the man's destiny was tied down before, now that is in Christ, all things are you hearing what I'm saying? Some people think that the old thing is talking about is the character. Once any man is in Christ, he's a new creature and the character has passed away. Okay, before you got born again. How many of you used to get angry before? You raise your hand now, see, pretend. I don't mean bad anger, at least you get angry. All right. You that is holier than us. Now that you are in Christ and all things have passed away. How many of you, just for one day, say, for once, you don't get angry again? <laughs> see, are you not going to raise up hand again? No? <laughs> Meanwhile, what is supposed to pass away? All things. <laughs> 
So it's not your character he's talking about. He's saying whatever was against you from the nature of the devil, once you are found in Christ, those things are gone, including generational curse. A child of, you cannot be born again and be under a generational curse. It's not possible. Anywhere they preach generational curse, the pastor is under the curse that needs to be rescued out of ignorance. I don't mean, I don't mean it negatively. I'm telling you, he needs rescue because he doesn't understand. If any man, if any man beware in Christ, he is, he has never existed before. That's the new creature means he has never existed before. Somebody who has never existed before, how can he have a generational curse? Because what you don't know is this, as a man thinking, that's how he becomes. If you think in Christ that you are under a curse, you will manifest it. Now I can show you in the Bible. Okay, I see I have 10 minutes. Let me, because I didn't plan to do that one. Let me use three minutes to show you that. Can I show you that? Okay, but next time when I come. I ask you now, should I show you this? In Jeremiah. No, I won't show you the scripture. You go home and check it. If I show you everything now, what will this pastor invite me for next time? Huh? When I, when I don't show you anything, you see all the elders and some pastors say, Pastor, please be an apostle. Let him come and complete that thing he said. But if I have dashed out everything now, you say, anyway, don't tell us everything. So don't worry about it. <laughs> In Jeremiah, God said to Jeremiah, he said, this word will never be used again. That the father has eaten grape and the teeth of the children is what? Set on earth. He said, that means a time will come, they won't say it again. He said, they will not say that the father's curse is over to the children. What did that cause? Generational curse. You know where generational curse started from? It's in the book of Exodus. That's where it started from now. I told you I won't show you. Go and check it. In Exodus, God said, anybody who hates me, that goes after something else, that hates me, I will visit his own equity upon him and his children and his children's children. To how many generations? All right, you know it. You see, I'm, that's the thing with the church. The church always knows negative things. But what Jesus has done, the church doesn't know. So the curse prevailed. So how will God change it? In Je the same Jeremiah, in verse 30, he said, this is how I will change it. For I will make a new covenant. The word covenant in Hebrew there means a new testament with the house of Israel. Are you seeing why the New Testament came? See Bible. So God said, I will change that pattern. Something called generational cost. I will change it by introducing a new covenant. Not by prayer. It doesn't change by prayer. It's by the New Testament. And what's the New Testament? Jesus Christ. Pastor, you see him? <laughs> so God said, in those days, he said, I will introduce a new covenant. That men, because of that testament, they will not say anymore. So, the Bible now brought that truth eh, into the book of Hebrews chapter 9. Alright, let's see, I'm for Hebrews 9. I give you that because you are a good congregation. <laughs> I must say, I won't laugh when, this part, when the apostle did preach, I will not laugh. Am I looking at your face? You see, I'm. I said, you see, I'm. All right, let me get that exact distance quickly. Hebrews chapter. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Chapter nine. Which verse am I looking for? Sharp, sharp. Apostle James, what, what are you doing? Get it fast, fast. Eh? Uh, is it fifteen? Make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jacob. <laughs> if it's not there, it should be in chapter 8. Edjo. All right, chapter 8. I found it. 
One to be chapter waiting. Chapter A. Men I leave that thing. Thank God for technology. Chapter 8, verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. Pa, pa, pa. Rush, time they go. Hebrews chapter 8, from verse 7. Everyone look at verse 7. For if that first waiting had been what? The word covenant is what? Testament. Now I told you. It means waiting. Testament. He said, if the first testament has been faultless, that means Old Testament is full of mistake. Fault. Fault. 